Good morning, God's beloved. Welcome to Worship with University Christian Church. I'm Reverend Megan Pegler, the senior minister here, and I am so glad to worship with all of you today. Whether you are here with us in person or online, I invite you to take a moment to sign in. Let us know that you worshiped with us today, especially if you are a first-time visitor. We want to be sure to be in touch with you to answer any questions you may have. So please leave us your contact information. I have a bunch of announcements today. As you know, it is a busy season, and you can see a lot of what's going on in the life of the church on the back of your bulletin. We have more information on our website and social media as well. This season, we are focusing on supporting MICA 6. Um, it's a university area, church-supported food pantry and youth drop-in center. And we are going to be volunteering this upcoming Thursday, December 14th, from 4 to 8 p.m. If you'd like to be a part of that and you can't get there until a little bit later, that is totally fine. Just come when you can. Let me know if you would like to be there because we have 10 spots reserved for us. We have five left, so y'all take one of those spots, please. We'll also be volunteering there again on Saturday, December 30th. In a week from today, we have our annual Christmas brunch. It's at 9.30 in the Fellowship Hall, so we would love to see you all there. Uh, if you would like to bring something to contribute to that potluck brunch, you are more than welcome. There is a sign-up link that has been going out in our email. If you don't receive our email and would like to um, get the email weekly or just have the sign-up link, please let me know. Christmas Eve is coming up in just a short amount of time. As you know, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, and we are still having morning church that day. So I hope to see you all here twice that day, if you can make it. Um, we will be here that morning on December uh, 24th for a Lessons and Carols service. And then that afternoon, we're changing our timeline just a little bit from how it usually is. Our Christmas concert is gonna be at four o'clock, followed by uh, Chris, uh, Christmas cookie and coffee and hot chocolate reception just right outside in the narthex. That'll be a time to enjoy conversation with each other, uh, to meet new people. You can come take a picture by the Christmas tree during that time if you'd like. It will be a festive and warm uh, time to share in that holiday spirit. And then our service will be at five o'clock. Um, and it will be under an hour, so if you are a little iffy about driving in the dark, just know that um, it will not be too, too dark yet by the time that we are done. In this busy time of year, it is good for us to make time to worship the one who is love, the one whose son we await in this season. And now, dear ones, peace to you, and welcome to this time of worship.
Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 85. Let us hear what God will speak, for God will speak peace to the people, to those who turn to God in their hearts. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing together our opening hymn. A reading from Isaiah 40, verse 7. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass.
Let us pray. Everlasting God, we change our minds and our passions. We grow and expand. We age and fade. Yet through all our changes, you are constant. You never leave us. As we light another candle, lend us your patience and stability that we will know peace in all the changes of this life. Amen. come now to our time of prayer. If you will look on the back of your bulletin, you'll see our prayer list there. I'd like to um, especially lift up that we keep Tara's mom, Janie, in prayer this week as she will be um, receiving surgery next Monday. And there are a couple of new additions to the list. Uh, if y'all would keep in prayer, all loved ones of Reverend Caritha Lawfridge. She was our um, longtime interim regional minister and president, and before that she was the um, area minister for the Northeast area. Uh, she died on Friday morning after a battle with cancer. We also lift up uh, prayers of joy and thanksgiving for Wayne and Lynn's new grandson, Brooks. He was born on Tuesday evening, and uh, he's just really adorable. If you want to see pictures after, I'm sure they would be happy to share. Our prayer is a responsive one, so if you would respond um, by saying, hear our prayer, once you hear me say, oh God, in your mercy, that will be how that will go. So I will say, oh God, in your mercy, and you will say, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that in the coming of Christ, your steadfast love and faithfulness have met, and your righteousness and peace have kissed. Thank you for the comfort you have offered us. Thank you for rescuing us from places of exile and wilderness. You are so good all the time but still we have not been at peace. We grapple with impatience, apathy, and greed, and we repent. Turn us instead toward you and your love. Your forgiveness makes it that we are able to walk in your ways. Comforter, we lift up all of those who are on our prayer list, and especially Janie, loved ones of Caritha, prayers of joy and thanksgiving for Brooks. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforter, we pray for all people of the world. You've created one human family to live in peace. Give us the wisdom to do so. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforter, we pray for all who are sick, who are in need, who are grieving, all who are in danger. You've made us for a holy purpose, to take care of each other. Give us compassion to love our neighbor and patience to care for those in need. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforter, we pray for your creation. Teach us to be good stewards of your good earth. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us, too, to walk in the way of peace. 
Help us be messengers of good news. Give us what we need to help smooth out the rough places we encounter. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who we wait for in hope and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
was a beautiful choir. Our scripture for today is from the book of Isaiah. It's chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass their consistency like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are glass. The glass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of the good news, Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift it up. Do not fear, says to the, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His re- reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather up the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. So ends the reading, the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, pour out your spirit on us this day that we hear the word you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, as many of you know, we've been celebrating Advent for some weeks now. We are in our fifth week of it, and our theme this year is out of time. So we're considering every week different ways that God is active in our human experience of time, and how God is active beyond it, too. We know that time speeds up and slows down, and sometimes it seems like it just stands still. Sometimes it seems like there's not enough time. We've talked about how time is uncertain, time is relative, how we can respond to what's going on in our own time. And today, we are considering a little bit about how time flies. I think we can all think of some examples of time flying. They say time flies when you're having fun, right? How many of you have had that sort of experience? I know that Time flies when I am reading a really good book, or when I'm in the middle of binging a really excellent TV show. I uh, suddenly lose five or six hours. Where, Where did that time go? It flew by. Time can fly until it doesn't. And a lot of the time that it doesn't seem to fly is when we are in the wilderness. Isaiah, whose words we heard Don read just a few minutes ago, was speaking to a people in the wilderness. 
Wilderness time seems to stretch on endlessly. It seems like you will never get out of that place and that space and that time. Wilderness time for us here and now is wide and varied, and we can think of a million different examples of the wilderness. How long, O Lord, will the war in Ukraine go on? How long, O Lord, will the war and fighting in the Middle East go on? How long, O Lord, will anti-Semitism and Islamophobia both make your world uglier? How long, O Lord, will power struggles and partisan politics rule the day? How long, O Lord, will the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? We could go on and on and on with these sort of worldwide wildernesses, but also the wildernesses of our individual and daily lives. And those wildernesses are just as real, even if they might pale in comparison to some of these grander examples, these worldwide wildernesses. They matter to us and they matter to God. I remember after I graduated from seminary and I had my first full-time church position at a wonderful church in Kansas City, even though it was a wonderful church, that time that I was there was a sort of wilderness for me. I was far from home, farther than I had been ever from the people that I love the most. And if you know me at all, I'm just a little bit obsessed with my niece and nephews, just a little. And at that time, only my oldest nephew was in the world, and he was a toddler. You know that age when they change exponentially day after day. That time was flying, and I felt far away from witnessing him growing up. There were other aspects of that time that made it a wilderness. And when I made it back to Texas, hallelujah, I remember... I was at a clergy meeting, and some of these folks in the youth ministry group I was in, uh, I had not met yet because they had moved to Texas in that time that I was gone in the wilderness. And we were going around doing introductions, and I said, I'm Megan, for those of you who I haven't met yet, I've spent the last couple years in the wilderness. <laughs> it just came out so naturally. I didn't plan on saying it, but it was true. Isaiah, second Isaiah to be precise, the author of Isaiah chapters 40 through 55, he wrote during the time of exile. Jerusalem had been destroyed. The people had been deported in a couple of different periods. And this time of exile is the same crisis that is echoed in the book of Lamentations. It was a time of deep crisis, deep wilderness. There was a lot to be grieving. Time was likely not flying for these people. But there are so many wilderness lessons that we can gain. It doesn't mean that we like that time in the wilderness, but it is still something that we can learn from. The writer Debbie Thomas explains how the wilderness is a, a bleak place. It's inhospitable. There's unpredictable weather. There aren't enough resources. There's not a clear, defined path. That trail isn't there for us to make our way. And she writes about how we're often in the wilderness against our own wills, whether by illness or loss or trauma or some other hardship. She writes, quote, we end up there when our careful plans fail. When someone we trust betrays us, when our beloved dies, when the faith we've practiced so effortlessly suddenly dries up. But it's there in the wilderness that God speaks tenderly to God's people. There is comfort even in this hard place. 
especially because of this hard place. And Isaiah is trying to convey to the people that God had not deserted them. He's trying to get them to take up courage and hope. And that is a tall order. How will they ever believe it? How will we ever believe it? In 2011, when I was in that wilderness time in Kansas City, one of uh, the great blessings of that time was a trip with some other young clergy people to Angola Prison, the Louisiana State Penitentiary. And we visited with uh, inmates who were on death row. We visited with people who had been sentenced to life in prison. And it was shocking how many of those folks had deep, deep hope. Their hope, what they were hoping in, differed from one to another, but a lot of them did have hope that they would one day be released. One of those men that we met was Kerry Myers. He was the editor of the Angolite magazine, and he'd been in prison for nearly 30 years for a crime that he and his family and the victim's family and the investigative detective all say that he did not commit. So when we visited with him in 2011, he still had some years to serve. He, he was in there for life, we all thought, but then just Three days before Christmas in 2016, he was released. He now works for the Louisiana Parole Project, an organization that helps to rectify um, sentences that were unfair, uh, sentences that were unjust, sentences that should never have happened. One person that they have helped to get released was a man named Lester Pearson. In 2021, he was released at the age of 84 after having served 57 years. Back in the 60s, when he was accused of a crime, he decided it was safer to make a guilty plea because that was the best hope for a black man charged with murder and facing the electric chair in the Jim Crow South. He was told at that time that he'd have a chance for parole after 10 years and six months. Many other prisoners were told that same thing. After 10 years and six months, you will have a chance for parole. They call them the 10 slash six group. And most of them seemed to be forgotten by the system. No one ever followed up with them after those 10 years and six months until various advocacy groups realized the oversight. There's a PBS article interviewing a, a group of these men who were released. One man said, I, it was like I fell from outer space because there was so much change that had happened when he had been behind bars. Time crawled for him while he was inside, but it flew by in a sense as well, because all of a sudden there were cell phones and technology of every sort all around, and it seemed like he was from another planet. Isaiah reminds us that even when it doesn't feel like it, even when it feels like time is crawling when we are in the wilderness, time is actually fleeting. The grass withers, the flower fades, he writes. All will pass. Nothing will last forever. Nothing is permanent. we get the message that life is short.
Maybe that's a good excuse for us to eat all holiday treats we want. No matter our best efforts, our bodies change, our relationships, relationships shift, we switch jobs or houses or cities, we take up new hobbies or new prayer practices only to set them down after a little while. Like Isaiah says, our constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever, Isaiah writes. That is one thing that is not fleeting, that is not temporary. God's constancy is the basis for our hope. That is something we can trust in. And so in this season of waiting and preparing for the birth of the Christ child, in this season of busyness, I don't know about y'all, but it's like holiday party after holiday party, holiday volunteering, just buying all the presents. There is so much to do, right? So in this time of busyness with time flying by, wondering how are we gonna get it all done, this time of hurrying and time also at the same time dragging on, we can trust, we can rely. We can be sure of the hope that God will feed his flock like a shepherd. God will gather God's lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. We can be sure of the hope that God speaks tenderly to God's people, who are all people. We can be sure that God cares for us more than we can ever imagine. We can be sure of that thing that we wait and hope for this season, that God, through Jesus, comes near to us. We can be sure, no matter what, that Jesus' love never, ever withers or fades. So in a world that is starving for words of comfort, for tender words, starving for the word of God, may we be messengers of that good news. No matter if time is flying or crawling along, let us be mouthpieces, let us be hands and feet of the one who speaks comfort, who rescues us from the wilderness, who gathers the lamb in her arms. This week in our house, we spent time getting ready. The Thanksgiving tree has moved from the office to the family room and is morphing into a Christmas tree. Christmas cards have gone out in the mail. The propane tank was refilled. Outside decorations have been hung on the lights and gates. The fall pumpkins have been painted and ribboned into outside Christmas ornaments. Presents have been bought and wrapping paper has been set out. Coordinating the schedules of adult children and the grandchildren is continuing and underway. <laughs> as exciting as all this is, and it is exciting for both of us, this church remains the heart of our Christmas experience. Here we get recentered again and again on the true reason we celebrate. We remember the coming of our Savior. Supporting this church is as important as any activity we can undertake this time of year. 
You can contribute with the use of the QR code in your bulletin. You can place your offering in the plates down front, or you may mail a church to the office. Let the offering be received. Loving God, as we anticipate and prepare for walking in the way of the soon-to-come Christ child, we bring our offerings, trusting that they will support many ministries 
that proclaim your good news and lead people in your path. By offering you these gifts, we also prepare ourselves to be led along your path of grace and love. We pray and give thanks for your continual guiding presence. Amen. comfort. God comes to us and gives us what we need as we remember and give thanks for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We remember the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, this, this is, is my body which is for you. Do, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way the cup after supper saying, this, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do, Do this, this as often, often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Will you pray with me? God of timeless grace, you fill us with joyful expectation. Make us ready for the message that prepares the way that with uprightness of heart and holy joy, we may eagerly await the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. When you are ready, you're invited to come forward down the center aisle to receive our uh, communion from the elders. Each tray has little cups of bread and little cups of juice. When you receive the bread, please partake of it, and if you feel comfortable, carry the juice with you back to your seat, as it is a long-standing tradition for us here to share the juice and the cup together. If you would rather partake of the cup as you receive it, that is fine, too. And if you need someone to bring you communion, please stay seated, raise your hand, and I will do that. The feast is prepared. All are welcome. Let us share in it.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of new life. If you would like to learn more about becoming a part of this community of faith in any form or fashion, just through more involvement or formal membership of any sort, um, or if you would like to join today, I invite you to uh, come forward or to reach out to me this week, and we will get you more information. And if you are interested in today joining, we will welcome you into this community. Please rise as you are able, and we will join together in singing hymn number 135. <laughs> to partake in the whole host of activities we have going on this season, but if time is flying by too much and you need to say no to some things, that is okay too. We do hope to see you here next Sunday for our Christmas brunch. Um, whether or not you bring something, all are welcome to enjoy that delicious meal together. Now receive this benediction. Beloved, as you go from here, may you rejoice in the immeasurable love of God fully revealed in the face of Jesus. Go in God's goodness, grace, and peace to love and serve. Amen. <laughs>